But if you want to stick around for Q&A, we'll be going over that right now. And uh, let's get into it, shall we? Yes. Let's do that. Okay. So I, in the background, I was starring some things that I found uh, quite interesting with everybody. So let me hide this real quick. Comments. Engine Man says, too many paper hand tourists here with no understanding of cycles. Engine Man, I, I'm going to push back on you because I got to tell you, I think that the tourists are long gone. If you're here right now, you're ballsy just to stick around for this terrible market. And I commend you for still being here and coming in. So there may be some paper hands, I guess, if you want to call it like that, or people, I don't like to say paper hands, people taking profits, or people having to pay bills, or people having to put food on the table, I, whatever you want to say. So uh, I think if you're here right now, tip of the hat. All right. And then uh, Mike Cron says, I run my 10K course four times each week at 5 a.m. So you think you're going to beat me? Well, let's see. Oh, that leads me to my next. I, fudge, I forgot to talk about this. So look, uh, that's that sweat coin. First of all, it's an app that doesn't give you any crypto. OK, the crypto doesn't come until Q3 right now. It's been around for like three years, the app itself. You can download it. You can use it. You get these sweat coins and you can use their online merchandise shop and like buy like, you know, little things here and there. I mean, some pretty cool stuff actually in there. But uh, there's a there's a way you can follow me. And it's just you just look at Robbie Dino's after you follow after you download the app. And uh, two things. First of all, all the coins that you accumulate in this app are going to be converted to the cryptocurrency sweat coin or sweat token, whatever they going to call it. So just so you know, might not be a bad idea to do that. And then uh, second of all, if you follow me at the end of this month, if you beat me, you won't. If, but if you do on the steps, uh, the top three people that beat me, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to give them an option of either coming on the show and talking, and I'll just see how I'll just shoot the, shoot the breeze, uh, or a live portfolio review, or I'll give you 50 sweat coins. Your choice. That was, uh, we have another day left in the, in the voting process, but that's probably what it's going to be. I'll give you those three options. So that's what's up. And uh, try to beat me. You won't beat me. I got a lot. I walk a lot. All right. Gas fee fees says, how many in the chat is walking hours out to kick Ross by a sweat coin? A lot of people. And then some people say, I'm just going to, I'm just going to attach to my dog. I'll, you know, and I'll beat you that way. I don't know about that. And engine man said, again, who would be focusing on current prices? All you got to do is DC at current prices. You got two, two years only until the next having debatable. Uh, go talk to my friend, Ben over in the cryptoverse. He thinks it should only be Bitcoin. I think he's even getting out of Ethereum. I got to talk to him about that one. But uh, he has some good points. It's just that my point is I'm doing this thing called micro DCAing. Like if I was going to, I did a video about this a couple of days ago. If instead of me putting in like every day, a hundred bucks into some altcoin, like a Cardano or like a Solana or like an Avalanche or like a Polkadot or whatever I do, instead of putting a hundred bucks every day, uh, probably every week or so, I'll put like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. I don't know if this is the bottom. I don't. There's a lot of data that says it's the bottom. But there was also a lot of data that said Bitcoin's going to 150K not too long ago. There's a lot of data that said that uh, we we're going to extend that bull run. It didn't happen. So I'm just hedging my bet. Ah, so Crypto Kicker, this is not a political channel, but here we go. Hey, Rob, about the shooting not to be political. Thank you. You say something should be done. Like what? I don't know. It's, I don't know. The thing is, is there's a lot of options out there. And even if you are on, if you are pro-gun or you are against gun, Everybody in these groups has their own resolution. Show me what you got and I'll talk about it. But, uh, or show me what you got and I'll vote on it as a, as a citizen. But well, I don't know what it is because we've been talking about this forever. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing up on 50 and I've seen, I've seen a lot of stuff. So that's how it is. I don't know what it is. David Allen, hey Tesla. Hey, hey friends. And then Adam says, I love the book. He's from Massachusetts. That, that was the book I was talking about is uh, This Time is Different. Every time you hear that, This Time is Different, it's usually not different. And there was a, <laughs> there was a book that did a lot of studies that kind of proved that, but whatever. And Phoenix says, CJ, step in on Rob's token, watch out. I personally, step in, I'm not a big fan of. Like, I'm st still got to download that. Like, I, I purchased a $1,000 NFT, and people say I didn't do it right, so I'm going to do it again and just to see if it actually works. But, I mean, Sure, but with what CJ was talking about, I'm like, Ugh. 
Not too good. Oh, what else we got? So this one, DD Crypto says, hey, Rob, do you think the reportings of how much Bitcoin the exchange have is accurate? Can they move Look, all on-chain data can be manipulated. Let's be honest. Uh, and then people will actually pick and choose some of that on-chain data to fit their thesis. So be very careful with that. And you can move things around. That's just how it is. Get CJ on the episode BJ. He'd be a great fit. He's a big chartist. Smart guy. <laughs> can you really info about VCs on Solana versus Cardano James? James knows. James, his, we've gone round and round about this before. And he believes that VCs are some of the lifebloods to push things into that next level uh, for different projects. He's got a good point because without that liquidity injected, some of these projects wouldn't make it. Some of their good projects wouldn't make it. But in all honesty, as time goes on, only the good projects will rise to the top. And we know that 95 to 99% of these projects are gone anyhow at some point, which is good, which is why we need this bear market to flush out all the nonsense. So we'll see which one. I just, me and him, like, I think we still agree on one thing, which is when you have, and he did a video on Kadena, I think it was called, where it was like the VCs and, and the insiders, it was like a massive, like massive, massive amount of uh, people that were controlling the, uh, the, the supply of the token. And, that, and you, you can't do that. And that's what we do over on Dan DGen on the channel. Link in the description. Uh, we take a look at four things. Will it make the cut? The community was the big thing, right? And that's why I picked those three, Gensokishi and Everdome and uh, Fame, because they had a massive million-plus community. It was a no-brainer. Then the utility, what does it do differently? What is it actually going to do? Is it a Me Too? Then the next one was the team. Where did they come from? What have they done before to actually get to the next level? Somewhat of an indicator. And then the tokenomics is the last thing. Am I going to get dumped on? What is the concentration? If you look at those four things at the base, you have a pretty good understanding and then you can move forward. And I just think that if you've got a lot of these VCs and they control a bunch, it's not a good idea. But uh, that's, James actually talked about that with that, I think it was Kadena. And he said, this is awful because it was a uh, concentration. So whatever. All right. David says, is this phase we are going through worse than 2017, 2018? Not for me. Sorry to tell it like that. I just have to be honest. Not for me. Um, because I'm not new to it. Not my first rodeo. For people in 2021, this is the worst thing of all time. So if I had to compare them right now, it's, it's hard to say because, like, again, there is that stress that's off me because I didn't buy Bitcoin at 69000 I bought Bitcoin at 17,500 in 2017 and watched it go down by 70, 75%. That sucks. And uh, Ethereum, I didn't buy it at 4,500 bucks. I bought it at like 100 bucks. Right? You know, I mean, I bought it higher, 750, I think, in 2017 or 650. But it's not as stressful because I've already done it. And for, for you sitting there right now going, well, damn it, what about me? Because I just got in. You're me. I mean, probably with not as big of a head, but I mean, you're me in, in the sense that your 2021 is my 2017. All you got to do is stick around. That's it. All you got to do is just stick your, just stick right here in the center and just, and I'll be, I'll be around forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Des, it's your birthday today. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> hey, happy birthday, Des. One of the moderators, my man. Thank you. You do a fantastic job with the wrench. Appreciate it. And then uh, Culture Dave says, yeah, 2017 was a much lower market cap, but not by much. 840 or 860 billion. Correct me in the comments. It's not too far away from 1.3 trillion. Just saying. It has gone down quite a bit. 3.2 trillion. Yeah. So... I, I will say this, though, and this is the interesting part. We've never been in an economic crunch like what we are right now. And we've never been going through, well, I can't say we, can't, we weren't going through wars, but we're going through wars. America with Afghanistan and being over there and, and the different problems that are going on in the Middle East and other little skirmishes. I think this is a more 
pronounced. We don't know what's going to happen. But the economic downturn is definite. The high inflation is definite. So we've never gone through this with Bitcoin. And I'm quite surprised how resilient it's been. And I think a lot of the big uh, institutions and even macro economists are looking at this going, wow, this thing really has held up quite well. And if it keeps holding on to where it's at in 30K, even with Jay Powell coming out in a couple of weeks talking about, hey, we're going to raise uh, basis points, whatever it is, and it still maintains, that's a W. Take that W and we'll run with it. Uh, Miguel says lots of people calling for 18K. Yeah, potentially. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I DCA. So I don't. And um, there's one thing that that two TA people can always agree on, and that is that the third one has no idea what they're doing. So, I mean, we can take a look at all the data, and it looks good, but in all honesty, no one has it. No one knows. Nobody knows. Not even me. Not even me. What? Paul is in the house. I would like to give a shout out to Paul. Paul, Paul texts me. I made some, some joke about this crypto and uh, I don't like to say it on the, on, the, on, the, on the show. I made a joke about a crypto and he's like, hey man, just making sure you're not gonna jump into that because that's, that's a bad move. He goes, <clears throat> the, the entire office was, was yelling at me to tell you, don't get into that crypto. And I was like, I was just a joke, but thanks for looking out, I do appreciate it. If you don't follow Paul, Paul Barone Network, great stuff. He's always got somebody on, his, on the show in the, uh, in the crypto space and does a really good job. Whoa, blast from the past. Where'd YSK go? YSK has got the best advice. Just keep your timeline horizon to, to five years or more. You know who else uh, does that? Which was this, that great, I like to talk about this one because it's very bullish, is uh, Swiss asset manager Julius Baer. And they just said the same thing. This is the moment. They got a half a trillion assets under management. This is the moment to get into digital assets right now, not tomorrow, right now. Uh, to gain a strong foothold. Will, of course, I will just preface it with, will this market go down? Yeah, probably. Will it go up? Yeah, probably. Do I know when? Absolutely not. No idea. So expect volatility, but even if you got some some pretty big, and just so you, just so you know, this Swiss bear, they are a, I got a, they are a 132 year old Swiss asset management firm. They've been around the block. So it's not like this is their first rodeo either. So just keep that in mind. And that's why I get a little bullish on things. But I do get, I've been bearish quite often. You, yeah, you're right. Five years agreed. Which crypto, please? I can't tell you that. I can tell you what I'm investing into. I got a lot of cryptos though. What's your top five crypto links? Bitcoin Ethereum is the lion's share. I'm, I know it's over 70%. I can guarantee that. I don't know exactly what it is. Can I get your digits? Ah, tomato coin rug pull. Look, you got to put marinara on the blockchain. So this is a good one. And this is the one that keeps coming up again. Warren Buffett says Bitcoin has no real world utility like gold, which is used for jewelry and electronics. First of all, uh, how much is really used for, for jewelry and electronics? Does anybody know? It's like around 10%. It's like about 10%. And there's alternatives being found all the time for that. But guess what? I own gold and I own silver. I love it. I, I have no problems with it whatsoever. Warren Buffett says it's not, it has no real world applications. However, you have to think about it this way. Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network is the most secure network on the entire planet. Let me say that one more time. Bitcoin is the most secure network on the entire planet. And it is a protocol, it is a first layer, if you will, or layer zero actually. And when people start to build on that with second layer applications, you don't have the hacks. You don't have the data leaks. You don't have those issues. How much would it be worth you to have the most secure network on the entire planet and you built your business off of that? That's just one. So I understand he has an argument. He also had an argument against Amazon when he stood up at a conference after Jeff Bezos talked and said, I don't understand why this guy exists essentially and his whole business, I don't see uh, how that will actually scale and I would never invest into it. Said it right to his face, Jeff Bezos, just saying. 
I don't, I, I like Warren Buffett, but you know, he's not right all the time just because he's Warren Buffett. Uh, let's see. Which crypto? I don't know. Both my daughters were at the concert and thank the Lord. Yeah. Remember those days? Whew. Five years or more. I like this. This is great. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I only trust Ben Cohen for TA. You got to trust somebody. There's much worse options. Ben's a pretty smart guy. Uh, buy sheep, buy soul. I made a claim Sweatcoin is better than Steppen. What's your argument? First of all, it works right now. I know people will say, well, Steppen works. What's the initial investment you have to do for, for Steppen to come into it? Is that really inclusive for everybody? I mean, are you kidding me? The base layer for an NFT that I have to put into was a thousand bucks. I don't know what the base layer is right now, but it's not good. It's not low, we'll say. And of course, people will say, but Rob, you understand because they're going to have the ability to where you can rent out your sneakers and then, then, you know, people can use it and they can walk around and earn. Great. When's that coming? Because that sounds pretty good. Also, on the top of that fact, that every time that somebody, uh, of course, uses your sneakers and they know that, you have to repair them. That's all I do is repair my sneakers. So right now, I'm just telling you, um, you can probably make some pretty good money on stepping if you get in pretty early or dump a lot of money into it. Go right ahead. I just feel like there's a lot, of, lot better options for my money right now. At least with Sweatcoin, I mean, I'm not, I don't, you don't make any money right now, but the coins that you can accumulate right now, when Q3 comes around, they get into crypto, they're going to do an airdrop and it's going to be the, as they say, the biggest token generation event ever in crypto. Let's see if they can deliver. I don't know. So I'm not a fan of stepping. That's it. Stepping's a pain in the A. Nobody can track gold. The privacy loan is worth it. It never crashes. First of all, that's true. It's kind of hard to track gold. However, let's say you're a refugee and you're in, I don't know. Let's say you're in, your, let's say you're in the Ukraine and you're trying to pass over to Sweden or wherever. And uh, how much gold are you going to carry? How much can you carry? I'm sure it'll be accepted. Or maybe you could just remember your mnemonic phrase for your Bitcoin or any kind of crypto that you have and just go across there. Also, if you want to transfer a, a boatload of money or just some money uh, across the world, how do you do that with gold? It's very tough. And again, gold has its place. It's a great store of value, right? It's holding up pretty well. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the charts. How good is gold doing? It was on a tear, I'll tell you that. Bop, 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 bop. Well, it's 1,800. It's pretty good. Again, it was on a tear. Let's see. So in May, 1821, so on it's done pretty good over, eh, not so. How about three months? Okay. How about a year? Still looking pretty good. How about five years? Up over five years. I'm just hoping I didn't have to change it for five years. However, to be fair, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. you know, Bitcoin five years ago wasn't, it was still, but nah, that's because 20,000 to 30,000. Yeah. So look, I mean, you can hold gold, you can hold silver, you can hold Bitcoin. It's up to you. But I just don't like the people who say that gold's the only, only option out there for you. I don't think that's very true and go from there. All right. Ah, oh, pawn stars for the best price. I don't know Harmony One. It might never crash, but it goes up like a turtle chasing a snail. That's why I have a secret, and it's not really a big secret. So we know that the safest play. Now, well, right now, the safest play is probably cash. Let's be honest. But outside of that, if you're going to do something of investing, um, I saw that. That uh, housing prices were down 16%. So that's good if you want to try to get in a house in real estate, but it's not good enough because uh, more downside coming. But if you take a look at the stocks, they're a little inflated, but there's still some winners out there for sure. I think Tesla's going to have their stock split. I believe Amazon, 
Amazon's also having a stock split coming up. That's something to definitely look into. Again, I can't tell you what to do. I shouldn't have even said that. This is what I'm doing, actually. I am not a financial advisor. So when I take a look at all these things that are going on, I just think to myself, what's, what's my best option? And if I get into like just Bitcoin, the chances for it go to 30,000, yeah, 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 30,000 up to six, it has to double. That's a lot of movement. That's a lot of market cap. And that's why I have a safe play. You know, 95% of what I do, 97% of what I do is safe. But then I take this 2 to 3% in the Dan Degen play, like I talked about, and it's actually worked out okay for me. Again, you probably lose all your money. But Dan Degen, I mean, again, I got it against Okishi at a penny and a half, 333,000 tokens. That was in December 15th, and now they're 75 cents. Not bad. Everdome, fraction of a penny, now it's worth two cents. FAMMA was a penny. I went to 49 cents, should have sold some more, but sold some. Now it's at seven cents. So these are the, the, the risky plays, but in all honesty, works out okay. That's just me. And uh, again, you can check out Dan Degen, but they're very, very super risky. But the first three did all okay. What do you think of Tether? They just withdrew 10 billion. I don't know. I'll have to take a look at that. It's interesting. I was never a fan of Tether, ever. I don't, I hold, I hold some Tether because I try to, when I do things on other exchanges, they only accept Tether for some reason. So uh, I, but the majority of what I have is USDC. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> if anybody tells you this is going to happen, stop listening. Ch Chartists will tell you what they see in the tea leaves. The influence will lead the bold, baseless statements. Just watch and learn. Exactly. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I can just, that's why I like this. This channel is just news. You know, I tell you what's going on and try to give you some, some uh, insight into the, into the trials and tribulations I went through. So you don't just like, ah, forget it. All right. What about XRP? I think the SEC is going to, I hope it's going to lose. It looks like it's on the losing end, but I don't know. Um, I know people will say, let me show you something. Uh, I, know, I know some people will say, oh, well, where'd it go? Here we go. Some people say, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's hard to beat the SEC because it doesn't happen uh, because they have so much power behind them in the U.S. government. But just remember that in 2013, was it? Uh, they brought a case against Mark Cuban for insider trading. And, uh, and he took them to court and he won. So uh, good luck. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> okay, Tyler says, any thoughts on the ETH merge and what we'll do for the price? Remember, the ETH merge is going to do nothing for gas fees. Still going to be high. Also remember that Vitalik Buterin did say last week or this week that he expects the merge to happen in August. But on the next breath, he said, that's unless there's no delays. And if there is delays, then we're looking at September, maybe October. I don't know. But remember, it's been seven years. So uh, it, leading up to it, it's going to be one of those, if it does hit, because remember, this is just, this, this isn't the final step. There's, there's three parts of this. And uh, the merge is the second part. And then the last and final piece, I believe, is shard, sharding functionality. So, I mean, there's, there's some parts going on to it. So... In this, in the second piece, the merge, um, buy the rumor, sell the news. If it does happen, that's what I'll probably do a little bit of, maybe. <laughs> maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. Exactly. Uh, Litecoin dead. I know some people like Litecoin. I just never was a big fan of Charlie Lee and his selling of of Litecoin at the very top. 
<laughs> Rob, you ought to figure out how to stream and walk at the same time so you can get more steps in. I need to because people are starting to catch up to me. And that's it. Uh, oh, good news. Tether is back to a buck, which it should be on KuCoin and Huobi. Hopefully Binance will get there soon. Excellent. Ah, hey, Dan, you was in a VA services when starting a business. Fellow vet here and was curious. So we tried to use a, my vet loan for a house and it just, uh, it just took a long time. So we, we bypassed it. But there's also, for vets, I know they have, um, it was some service for like small, like, like, like the SBA, uh, they would say, Hey, if you want to come in and like learn, if you have some kind of, some kind of VA background, we can give you some type of additional funding, but I never used it, but it's out there for you for sure. So just, you know, to speak with your VA rep. Uh, oh yeah. So Robbie speak like you are sure you can transfer your sweat coins to crib. We don't know America's are able to as a sweat using USA. So, so you're right. So the thing is, is that uh, when you sign up, just know that those sweat coins at this moment are not going to be able to be put into sweat tokens because you live in the great United States of America and Gary Gensler is protecting you harder. So I said at this moment, you might, you will not be, but hopefully potentially later on you will. However, I will just say this, like uh, I don't have to spend anything to sign up for it and the sweat tokens I actually already get and I can use them in the merch store. So I'm like, well, I'm not making anything. Uh, I'm not losing anything. Actually, I am making a little bit of things. So if it does come out, I win. If it doesn't, well, uh, I don't. But at least, at least I got to be a little bit healthier. Uh, you can go the stepping route, but I'm telling you that uh, the, the cheapest NFT I found was like a thousand bucks. There might be something cheaper than that now. I don't know, but was not my best decision. All right. And guys, I think that's it. AVAX is crashing. Well, what's new? Jesus. <laughs> Bear market confirmed. Bitcoin Ponzi has arrived. I'll just leave you with this. Uh, if you think Bitcoin's a Ponzi, wait till you learn about pensions and social security checks. I'll leave you with that. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All things to talk about are time sensitive and that's it for today. So I really appreciate you stopping by and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Adios.